two things we talk about in this program all the time is composure and resiliency, and uh, we, we, we had to OD on those tonight because uh, we certainly um, didn't start very well, didn't start in very good field position, but look, I couldn't be prouder of our guys. At halftime, nobody blinked, nobody questioned. It was the most together I've ever seen our team, and uh, the theme this entire week was do it for your brother and do it for each other, and I thought they hung tight and did that. And with that said, there's a ton of things to clean up and a lot to get better, and I would be remiss if I didn't give Eli, his team, uh, the Missouri Tigers, the atmosphere they had tonight, uh, uh, some kudos too. They played really physical, really hard, and uh, whipped our butt up front. Um, but I'm proud of the way our guys played. And when we had to run it, about the only time we could run it when we had to. Yeah, I was going to those two drives to end the game. Is that you've had a lot of big drives your teams have over the years, but that, where's that one rank up there? Uh, you know, I don't know because uh, I hate that we had to do that because you, you know begs the question why I couldn't do that earlier. And uh, <laughs> you know the determination that they showed. We always talk about rising to the competitive nature of an opportunity, and the opportunity arise tonight and they answered the bell. Um, but if we don't answer the bell earlier, then we, w we won't be a very good football team. We we we've got to improve uh, in those areas. And, you know, it's not like we haven't been working on it prior to tonight. You know, we've seen some of those things show through and give Missouri uh, a lot of credit. You know, they, they tried to make us one dimensional and um, it was tough. It was tough sledding tonight. We didn't have our, our best night for sure. Kirby, what do you say about uh, what your defense did in the first half when the offense was struggling so much, limiting Missouri even at just 16 points in the first half? They should. I mean, let's be honest. We got we got better players than Missouri up front on our defense. I hate to say it, but we do. And Eli knows that. Um, he did a great job running the ball, managing the clock. He shrunk the game. Um, I thought he did a phenomenal job attacking us, taking shots. Um, but our defense rose up. I, you know, give, give Schumann, Muschamp, the defense staff a lot of credit. They stayed aggressive. Um, there's a lot of players hurt out there. You know, David Carter went down. We got guys dinged up. Warren Brinson did a little growing. Uh, Smiles out for a while. I don't know how long he was out, but there was a series of plays. He's out. I mean, we got Tresman out there. It feels like he's on one knee, and he's he's struggling. He, he doesn't get to practice much during the week. So, I mean, we we just they, they fought. And the biggest play of the night is probably the Malachi starts tackle on the one yard line, you know, or whatever it was, one foot, because it allowed us to stop them. And we have played good red zone defense. So I'll give those guys credit. What does it say about Malachi that he makes a play like that as a true freshman? Well, it says he's got a lot of ability, you know. I mean, we didn't fit the play right, but um, we had two guys bust on the play, just just things we don't do. But uh, for the most part, we bottled up the run. I think if you took that run out, we controlled the run game all night. Um, but that's a big play for Malachi. I think he tried to, to strip the ball out. How about, Jack, how about Jack's night, Jack, is it? Oh, unbelievable. I mean, I, when you said Jack, I was like, who? Pod. Um, <laughs> he uh, – it, it, it was the pressure. Think about the pressure on each one of those kicks. I, mean, I feel for the kid just repeatedly putting him out there in those pressure situations, and he's so confident and uh, and and just he has his he, he has a way about him. He has a routine. He really believes in, and um, I, I, you know he was the MVP of the night. He and Dejon Edwards for sure. What, what, are, what, are, what are you, you guys thinking on uh, on Jalen? Uh, how, how is he? And, and well, I, it's a knee, so I don't know how bad it is yet. Uh, he, he tried to go back. He couldn't. I think it's an MCL, MCL sprain, which is probably good news. Um, tough, too, because it's a tough, tough block. It's a cut, tough cut block that they do well and uh, tough on him. But he wanted to go back. He couldn't go back. He's done it today? You know, Stetson didn't play his best game. I think he'd be the first to tell you. I don't know if the, the, whether the atmosphere got to him. Uh, you know, he kept his composure. Uh, he, made, he led two really good drives down the field. The one drive uh, – before the last drive, he made some big-time throws, but he missed some throws tonight, and I think he'd be the first to tell you he didn't uh, he didn't play his best game. And you know that's not all Stetson's fault. That's some of my fault. Putting a lot on him on the road. That's some of Coach Munkin will take some of that. We all take it as offensive staff and a head coach. Some responsibility of maybe we're asking him to do too much. And uh, I thought he did a I thought he did a good job of what we asked him to do. He does have to be more accurate. Kirby, what stood out to you from Keeley's performance tonight? Uh, well, Keeley's one of our veteran guys. He's played the most, you know what I mean? And they threw the ball at Keeley and Kamari a lot, but we also <laughs> made them throw it to them because when they can't run it, what are they going to do? They're going to throw it at those guys. we got to make some plays on the ball, you know what I mean? Like there's several opportunities that I feel like Keeley should have a pick and it turned into an incompletion or a, maybe a P.I. And uh, he's got to play with a little more confidence um, 
and uh, same way with Kamari. That he had, he had a great play on the last drive. Kamari did that. He played a double move and did an outstanding job. But when you play corner in our defense, you're going to be under attack because it's hard to run the ball. Trevor, you talked about how close this team was tonight. Just what was the attitude on the sideline, even when things were going well for Missouri? It was great. We we, we had a great mantra this week. That, that every player had to pick one brother, and he he wouldn't leave him without him. And he had to you know be, hold him accountable for whatever it is that that guy wanted to be held accountable for. And, I thought the, the message for the whole week was, are we taking the 11 best up there or are we taking the best 11? And there's a big difference. There's a big difference. You know, 11 best doesn't win. When, she, when stuff goes wrong, it fractures. Uh, when you take the best 11, they stay together. And this team, this team bonded tonight. Now, don't get me wrong, we, we got a long way to go. But the resiliency and the composure they showed made me proud. That's not something you would do in the offseason. Could you sense that they needed that bonding, that talk this week to make it an important message? Well, I didn't want to make it all about Missouri. You know, you make it about the opponent all the time, and you got to make it about yourself. And you got to make it about improvement. You got to make it about us getting better and, and not always talking about the opponent. And, uh, you know, I thought our guys bought into the, the oneness and having each other's back. And there were guys, you know, saying it in the locker room at halftime. And uh, there was a lot of confidence in that locker room. I think that, that was a program win in a game that we did not play very well. And uh, the, the history of the program and the guys believing from last year helped us in the fourth quarter. Kirby, did Missouri expose anything tonight that you worry might carry over? Well, year? everything, every game's going to expose us something. I mean, we got exposed on defense the week before, and we, we worked on things to help with that, and it helped us, right? So they did some really good things tonight that, sure, I don't know if expose is the right word, but they certainly did some good things that, guess what? We got to have some answers for them, and uh, we got to get answers for them fast. It starts. We're getting some wideouts healthy and uh, being able to run the ball. The two weeks in a row, you guys have put it on the ground and uh, just bad penalties at the worst possible moment. So you can you really kind of clean that up? How, how frustrating is that for you? It's frustrating to put it on the ground, but you know, it happens in football. You know, you don't ever want to have it. I mean, we had, what, three games without any maybe? And then all of a sudden you get a little rash and, and we're not getting them. We're not getting them back. We're not playing the ball in the air. And Chris, I thought, should have had a pick and we should have had some opportunities to get the ball off them. But we can't. We can't put the ball on the ground and be successful, so we got to do a better job uh, managing that. We talked about Dejon after the Kent State game, but what, what did you see from his performance, especially down the stretch? Oh, he's tough, man. He's 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 from the neck of the woods where they grow up playing football when they're five, six years old, and he just wants to carry the ball. And he took some shots tonight, and uh, he got some hard earned yards at the end. You know, just the, the physicality at the end of the game was really impressive. You know, by our offense, we do that drill every Friday and say. You got to get two first downs, and the defense can put every every guy they got in the box. And I'll be dang if they put everybody in the box, and we still got two first downs, and we couldn't do it all night. How we, vital was just that toughness from Dejan? You know, by our offense, we do that drill every Friday and say, "You got to get two first downs, and the defense can put every every guy they got in the box." And I'll be dang if they put everybody in the box, and we still got two first downs, and we couldn't do it all night. How we, vital was just that toughness from Dejan and, and timeliness as well? Well, it was the difference in the game, that and Pod, right? I mean, uh, the, the toughness he showed and resiliency he showed on that last drive. Let's, let's, let's be honest, Kenny and Kendall did a hell of a job too. Kenny's out there like a wounded man. I mean, the guy was running for the team with great effort, great toughness, running over people. And there's no way you could say he was 100%. I mean, he was, he was doing it for his teammates. Would you make a Darnell's performance tonight, especially when it seems like Defenders are literally bouncing off of him as they yeah. make contact. Couldn't agree more. I mean, a lot of credit goes to Darnell and Stetson showing confidence in him to, to throw the ball in his area code, you know, and he goes and gets it. And, uh, you know, people don't give this guy enough credit, but Darnell was one of the leaders in that locker room that was, you know, said, I, I want to run the ball, get behind me, let me let me move people. You know, there's, there's a play out there where he absolutely on Brock Bowers' screen for the, I thought it was a touchdown, but it got to like the one foot line that Darnell just destroys a guy. You know, there's 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 no value you can put on that. It seemed like Kenny kind of set the tone there late with with those last couple drives with those runs. Would, would you agree with that? And, and how how banged up is he? How how much time is he missing at each week during the week right now? I don't know. I mean, he he didn't do anything Monday, but he practiced the rest of the week, and uh, you know he's not full go. We're trying to get him back. It's a it's a quad contusion. I don't think it got worse tonight, so hopefully he'll recover quickly. But in this league, man, he's not beat up. I mean, I promise you, every team in the SEC going home tonight is beat up. It's physical and it's tough, and uh, it's why you got to have depth. You alluded to this earlier, but the, the Missouri's just resilience in this game, and that that kicker who Man, you know uh, had a tough time. Kids get already makes five tonight. What was the longest? Fifty-six. It's incredible. Two over fifty at forty-nine.
I mean, he, he was incredible going to the game. I talked to Eli for the game. I'm like, you know, I've done the same thing you did. Sit on the ball, kick the field goal to win, and, and, and he found a way to lose it twice, you know. And, 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 and you can't do anything different. That kid comes out at night and makes every field goal. And uh, it's a lot of credit to Missouri's players, man. Their, their, their defense is – and I felt that way going to the game. You know, the defense coordinator we know well. We shared a lot of ideas with him. He's really aggressive. And uh, they played us tough. Speaking of Missouri's defense, what do they do so well to kind of keep your offense from getting going? Disruptive. I mean, they, they just attack the line of scrimmage, you know, and you got to make them pay for it, usually on the perimeter. There's a lot of, I wouldn't call them unsound, but uh, uh, not worried about the pass. And they're really aggressive, and they make up for it by getting hits on your quarterback. Um, they timed up a lot of good pressures. You know, the Hopper kid from Georgia played really well for them and made some plays, and uh, they did a good job. As a coaching staff, is there anything in particular y'all do or say when your offense has a first half like that to get them to flush it and move on and play well in the second half? Or is it kind of up to them to kind of take it upon themselves and play well? It's with composure and resiliency, right? Give the players a way to help themselves. Your job as a coach is how do you help your players in moments like that? Claude told me walking over here, you had to work tonight. And yeah. <laughs> it, 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 there's, there's a lot of work that goes into to that because it doesn't, especially – with a little more wisdom. It doesn't do any good to yell and scream and holler and hoop and holler. The kids want to do well. You got to help them. The environment makes that hard. And part of that is planning, you know, having a good plan that if things aren't going well, what can you go to? And, uh, you know, we've always relied on our ability to run the ball in these tough moments like this. And we didn't really have it tonight. And uh, we had it at the end, but we didn't have it early. Missouri had a couple of big plays for the air tonight. It was kind of forbidden you guys. Getting your ass whipped up front. That's what the finger was. Like, when you put on pads and you got to strike another man and he's across from you and he weighs 300 and you weigh 300, somebody wins and somebody loses. So the finger is, we getting our butts whooped. Okay, now, scheme-wise, we can maybe help them out. We can do some different things. We can look and find some things. Gap plays helped us. You know, we ran some gap plays and that really helped us. But... When you get you, when you're not running the ball well, you're usually getting whipped. Let's take two more questions. Just what'd you learn about your team tonight? Composure, resiliency, man. They believe in it. They believe in each other. They never doubt it. Um, but that doesn't solve the problem that, that we got to get better. I mean, you know, you sit around a hotel all day and and you wait to go play a game, and everybody in the world thinks you're going to go out there and blow some team out. And I've been in this league too long, man. I know different. I know these environments you're walking into. And you know what? It's going to be really hard next week, too. And it's going to be really hard the next week. And it's going to be really hard two weeks after that. It just doesn't change. And uh, you guys may think it's going to be easy at some point, but I promise you, it's going to be really hard in the SEC every week. We saw Arian Smith coming back tonight. Just, man, how great, much man. progress have you seen from him to, to be where he is? I didn't think the guy would be back, to be honest with you. I mean, I, uh, Ron, you know, didn't, didn't think he'd be back as quick as he got back. He got back, he made a play tonight, showed some confidence. We need him. I mean, if he had been coming along at this point, I, I just got a lot of hope for him. And then the injury pulled him away again, and now he's back out there, and we got to find a way to get uh, AD back, and uh, we just got to get healthy at Big Wide Out. Thank you. Thank you.